Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. If you've been following the news on the x86 handheld scene, you know we've got a lot to look forward to at the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023. There have been a ton of different handhelds announced. Some have already gone up to Kickstarter. Some might be shipping in the next few weeks or so. And most of the higher-end handhelds are going to be powered by Ryzen chips, mainly the Ryzen 6000, be it the 6600U or the 6800U. But a couple of these companies have announced some lower-end budget handhelds on the price range from $289 up to $389, depending on your RAM and storage configuration, powered by the i3-1215U. And in my opinion, I think these are going to be some of the best budget handhelds for emulation. And in fact, I've already created a video showing off the emulation performance of this chip, the i3-1215U at 15 watts. And when it comes to emulation on this chip, it's absolutely amazing. It'll do Wii U, it'll do PS2, GameCube, Wii, it'll do 3DS, even PS2 and Switch emulation. With the wattage up a bit on Switch, I actually had to go up to 18 watts there. But at 15 watts, which this is going to be rated at and a lot of these handhelds that are going to be releasing with it, it's going to be able to handle a lot of these higher-end emulators at full speed with no issues whatsoever. And if you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. But I've had a lot of people asking about just regular PC gaming on the i3-1215U. And that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Now, I don't have access to one of the handhelds powered by this chip yet, but I was able to pick up an HP laptop from Best Buy with the i3-1215U. I can set the wattage on this to basically anything I want, and we're going to go with a 15 watt TDP on this unit and see exactly how it handles PC gaming. And to tell you the truth, I was actually pretty impressed with it. Now, I still think that this is definitely one of the best handhelds that you're going to be able to pick up for emulation once they're released, but when it comes to PC gaming, this is not a super AAA game chip, but there's still a lot of stuff that we can get done with this. And before we jump into it, I want to give you a quick rundown on the specs of this chip. So when it comes to the handhelds, they're going to be priced anywhere from $299 up to $389, depending on the storage and RAM configuration. But what we have here is the i3-1215U. Six cores, eight threads. We've got two performance cores with a max clock up to 4.4 GHz and four efficiency cores with a max clock up to 3.3. Now that's at about 30 watts, so you're going to see those kind of clocks, but at 15 it will be much lower. When it comes to the integrated graphics, we've got the Intel UHD 12th Gen iGPU with 64 execution units and a clock up to 1.1 GHz. You're going to be able to opt for 8 to 16 GB of RAM, but with the unit we're going to be testing, we've got 8 gigs of RAM running at 3200 MHz, and this is running in dual channel, so we can get the max performance out of this DDR4. Okay, so a little explanation on the TDP with this little i3 here. So usually this is actually set at around 20 watts to 30, depending on the power profile you're using. That's just what HP did from the factory. We can even go down as low as 12 watts, but I wanted this right at 15. All of them state a 15 watt TDP. Now I'm sure we can actually go higher, we can go lower, but for most of these tests here, we're gonna be running it at 15 watts, just like my emulation video. And all of those emulators actually ran really well at 15 watts, except for Yuzu, the Switch emulator. I did have to take it up to 18 to get it to run at full speed, but that's not far off from 15. Now what I use to set this is throttle stop, because out of the box, this is set anywhere from 12 to 30, depending on the power profile. That's just how HP did it with this laptop. I've got this set at 15 watts, even the boost at 15 watts. So if I stress out the CPU using CPU-Z, go straight to 15. From the TPL section over here, you can see we're right at 15. So yeah, we're definitely going to be running this at 15 watts. And through all of these tests, I'll have Afterburner running, so you can check that out. It's got all of our real-time information there. But I've had a lot of people asking about, you know, just regular PC gaming on this i3 chip. I've stated in the past that I personally think that the newer i3-1215U handhelds that are going to be released will be some of the best budget handhelds on the market when it comes to emulation. But, you know, a lot of people are going to want to play some PC games. And while there's going to be a lot of AAA games that just don't run well on this chip, I think you can get away with playing a lot of great games on this device. So that's exactly what this video is about. But the first thing I wanted to show off here was a Geekbench 5 benchmark. So first up, we're running at 15 watts. We got a single core of 805, multi 2398. Not super impressive, and it's still not super impressive for an i3, but as soon as I take this up to 28 watts, we now have a multi-core score of 1,569, and multi jumped up to 4648, which is looking really good for a mobile i3 chip. 
But when this is set up in a handheld, we're not going to be running it at this high wattage. They're basically going to be set at 15 watts. Now you could always go up there if the cooling system can handle it, and it'll significantly lower your battery life. So that's why we're going to be testing this at 15 watts. But just note that this does have more that we can pull out of it with a higher TDP. Okay, so the first game here is The Witcher 3, and this was actually pretty impressive. We're at 720p low settings, and I've got it locked at 30 because I've only got 8 gigs of RAM. And if you check out my RAM usage up there with Afterburner, we're getting really close to using all of the RAM on this unit. And unlocking this frame rate does increase that RAM usage. So I'm set at 30, but this is really good for a little i3 chip, and it will run at 30 FPS low settings. Next up, we've got Street Fighter V, 1080p, medium-low settings, and basically with this setup here, textures is set to medium, everything else is at low, but as you can see, it does run at 60 FPS. We're still at 15 watts on this CPU, but unfortunately, I just can't get Afterburner to work with this game, no matter what command I use, so I had to use the Game Bar plugin up in the top left-hand corner. Going back to some older stuff with San Andreas, we're totally maxed out here at 1080p, and I suspected that we'd get really good performance with this older stuff, and that's really where this thing's going to come in handy. Playing older titles on a handheld like this at 15 watts is going to work out really well, and there's still a bunch of older games that you can have a lot of fun with, especially on a handheld. Here's Team Fortress 2, 1080p high, and as soon as I spawn, basically coming out of this cave area here, I would die almost immediately due to, you know, all of the bots, but it does run pretty decently. Next on the list, we've got The Art of Rally. I use this on Game Pass or the Game Pass app for PC, one of my favorite little racing games for the past couple months. We're at 1080p medium settings and we can run over 60 FPS with this. This little chip is going to be great for indie games like this. Dead Cells, Cuphead also runs at full speed, 1080p. Uh, a lot of the indie stuff is just going to be fully playable with this setup. I also tested the original Skyrim, we're at 900p high settings and we can run this at a constant 60. Now at a higher wattage, 1080p high is totally possible, at 18 watts it does work out well like that. But at 15 watts, 1080p high, I did get some dips down into the 55 range, so I just dropped that resolution a little bit and it's going to play like this all day long. Still looks really good and it's still an amazing game to play on the go. I also wanted to see how well this chip handled Overwatch. This is a very well optimized game, been on the market for a while, and at low settings, 720p, 15 watts, this is a playable experience. I would go ahead and turn V-Sync on, just lock it at 60 and play away. And I'm pretty sure we could run this at 1080 low at about 20 watts, but we're just right here at 15 and it's doing a pretty decent job. And the final game I tested here was God of War. Now going into this one, I knew it was going to be hard pressed to run this even at 30 FPS, 720p low, especially at 15 watts. So what I did was take it up to 25 and we still can't hit a constant 30 with it. I really didn't expect this game to run this well on this little chip here. I mean, it's so close to 30, but unfortunately we just can't hit it there even at 25 watts. So overall, it's definitely possible to play some of our favorite PC games on this i3 CPU. I'm a huge fan of these Alder Lake chips, especially when it comes to emulation. And that's really where I would stick with this little setup here. In a handheld with the i3-1215U running at 15 watts, you're going to be able to emulate basically everything you want. With some of the higher end stuff like Yuzu and some harder to emulate PS3 games, we will have to take the wattage up. But at 15 watts, I think these are going to be awesome handhelds, especially if they can keep that price down. 
I've seen some companies state that they're going to be able to sell these as low as 289 with 8 gigs of RAM up to 389 depending on the RAM and storage variant. But yeah, I mean, this would be a great little budget setup with this chip here, especially when it comes to emulation. But PC game performance really isn't going to be on par with something like the Steam Deck or the higher end 6000 series Ryzen handhelds that'll be released. But when it comes to those, the price is going to be much higher, and I do think that this could be a great budget little option if you're looking for a nice little emulation handheld. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see tested on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.